Okay, in this series, I want to go ahead and cover the basics of getting up and going with the Epic Online Services, or EOS for short. I will be referring to Epic Online Services as EOS throughout this, just as it's a lot shorter. But anyways, to sum up what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be downloading the SDK and setting up and testing the basic example project. Then what we will want to do in the next video is bring out the plugin and set it up over inside of our Unreal Engine project. Now our Unreal Engine project is just a 4.27 project using the third person example and it's using the not the blueprint but the C++ example. Now the only things that I have done are I have disabled the VR related plugin so that way it just doesn't pop up whenever I do something like whenever I launch the project it doesn't come up with VR stuff and I disabled a lot of the inputs just to remove some of the complaints that it gets or the warnings that I get in the output log whenever I first launch the project. So to begin, the first thing we want to do is actually download the SDK. So if you head over to your developer portal, sign in. Obviously, if you don't have an account, you need to make one. Head over to SDK or hit download SDK at the main portion or the main screen in the dashboard. Go to SDK type choose CSDK, and grab the latest version. In my case, it is 1.14.1, and download. Once you have that, you open it up. After you extract it, you will see three folders. And what we want is the samples. And in here, we can choose whichever sample we want to use to test with. So in my case, I'm going to use authentication and friends. So once you picked out whichever one you want to use, again, these are specific to which permissions your product has. And I'll explain what a product is and what I mean by that here in a minute. So go ahead and launch samples.sln to bring up the solution. Then in here, in my case, I'm going to use authentication and friends. So just to save time for doing it later, I'm going to right click, hit build, drop it down, go to source, and go to sample constants.h. Now this is where we're going to set up our information for our product. That way we can use it to kind of as a testing zone. So we're going to use these sample products as a way to test to say, okay, our product is up and working. We have the correct information. And then we can take all that knowledge that we know, okay, all this is good and good and working and move it into Unreal Engine and actually make use of it. Because what I want to do in Unreal Engine is I want to set up some basic sessions. So I want to be able to create a, create a session through EOS, find a session through EOS, and join that session through EOS. So to begin to access all this information, we need to create a product. So what you do is again on your dev portal, go to create product, give it a product name, or like test for example, and as you can see it generates this URL for it, or whatever you want to call this, and hit next. So in my case I've already made one, EOS YT for YouTube tutorial. So that way I have a very distinct name, and once you create it, you should be met with this page here. So head down to product settings, and here you can see your product name and all your credentials. Now by default, you will not have these client credentials. They will not be here at all, and I don't even think you will have this application's credentials, but I will show you how to get those here in a minute. So we're going to ignore these for the time being. So if we look here, of course this is badly set up for the window, whatever. As you can see, we have product ID, product ID, sandbox ID, sandbox ID, deployment ID, and deployment ID. So we want to make sure we fill these out as well as get our game name. So our game name is actually our product ID, or not our product ID, our actual product name. So if I head here and grab our product name, I can copy and paste that right into game name. So this is now set. So we want to do this for the remainder. So we want to do this for product ID, sandbox ID, and deployment ID. And then I'll show you how to create a client. So let's copy our product ID and just go through and paste it in. Same thing for our sandbox and then our deployment ID. So we get all that. And the only thing remains is our clients. So you can ignore this encryption key. This example doesn't interact with anything that requires an actual, any form of encryption. So just leave this by default. We got to create a client ID. So let's head over to clients and you will see two blank areas. So we want to add a new client and in here you want to give it a client name. 
So this could be whatever you want. In my case, as you can see here, I'm using test client one. And then you have to give it a policy. So it's going to ask you to create a policy. So you may actually want to create this policy first or go ahead and click on create policy here when it prompts you to do so. In my case, I want to go ahead and create the policy. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just start from scratch here. So this might say something like game client or whatever, doesn't really matter, and give it a name. So in my case, I'm using new client policy one. So this is going to be my client policy here. And then I want to go ahead and make sure I set some of these conditions here or permissions. That's kind of the way you can look at it. So in this case, I want to have basically everything. So I'm going to set this client policy type to be custom. And then I'm going to go through, I'm actually going to check user required and check through achievements and all this fun stuff. So we have everything checked. Then starting from the bottom, doesn't really matter your order, we're going to go through and we're going to actually check everything that you physically can. Again, this is for the sake of testing and I will explain roughly what some things do and kind of their purpose as to why you may or may want or may or may not want to have certain things checked and set up. So just keep working your way through and we're good to go. Okay, so what do all this do? Like what did the stuff that we just checked, what, what's it for? So we head over to matchmaking and you head down and you just look and you see create session. So I have this checked. So that means a client, like any client that I create here, that is using our new client policy one, like this client policy that we're on, has the ability to create a session. It has the ability to like do everything you see that is checked in all of these sections. It has that ability or that permission granted to it. If I don't want this client to be able to create a session, I uncheck and save and I'm done. This client can no longer create a session. So in my case, I want it to because that's what we're going to be doing later on. So I'm going to leave this checked. So this is where you would filter out what you want your specific client to have the ability to do. So once you have everything that you want checked, hit save and exit. And then you want to make sure that your test client, like your new client here that you just created or are creating, is using this client policy. So it should be by default and everything else you can ignore. So this gives us some other information. This would allow you to actually see your client ID and your client secret. So you can copy your client ID, paste it into your client credentials ID, and copy the client secret and paste this into your client credentials secret like so. Now I will be removing this product. Uh, as of this date, you cannot remove them by yourself. You have to, as far as I'm aware, message somebody at Epic to basically allow them to, they have to be the ones that do it. But I'm going to be removing the permissions and flat out scrapping this client ID and all that kind of stuff. So don't bother trying to screw with me. I know some of you probably will, but that's the American way. Anyways, once we have that done, we are good to test. Now this will not work by default. So I'll show you some things that you can do to kind of, uh, I guess you could say debug. So one issue you're not, I'm not going to be able to show you because I accidentally already fixed it and I cannot undo it. So if we launch this application, so we're launching the uh, yeah, what's the authentication and friends uh, sample project. We want to head to account portal and hit login. Now in my case, it automatically launches to my browser and gives me this message here. In your case, you're most likely going to have a warning in the form of this. So let me actually, well, basically you'll have this section that I have highlighted here, you will have something like that. And if you look at the error message, it will probably say something like application not set or client does not have something in relation to an application. That's where you need to fix it. So if we head back to our dev portal, we can go to Epic account services. And if you go to linked clients, this will all say not configured. So you would want to click on linked clients and make sure you select your test client one or whatever you named yours right there and hit save. Then we can head over to permissions and hit save again. And I need to actually enable something here, but I'll kind of walk you through some ways you can troubleshoot to figure out what you need to do. Then brand settings for now, ignore it, doesn't matter. 
so that's it it just doesn't matter and then once you hit login again you should be at where i'm at right here so you should get this unknown error so this error says client is not authorized to use the following scope friends list so this is a permission however it's not one of those permissions that i was just showing you in the client policy so it's none of these here this is actually in the epic account services and if we head over to permissions this is where we can kind of see what we need so if you see friends is currently set to disabled so if we want the ability to you know see our friends list and access it and all that kind of stuff for this specific what's it called again authentication and friends obviously by the name we want to see our friends list we need to enable this and while i'm at it i don't I'm probably going to, yeah, I think I have to actually use this in the, um, for the Unreal Engine portion. Go ahead and enable online presence as well and hit save changes. Then we can head right back and hit login again. Now this time, as you can see, it is just requesting permission. No error, no nothing. And we can hit continue to app and then hit allow. Once we hit allow, we can come back to our application give it a couple seconds and it should receive well that it's been granted as you can see here it is filling out the log with blah 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 and we are now good to go we are now logged in you can see here's my name here and you can do you know just interact with it however you please so this here confirms that okay we have a working product we have all the correct information that we need to begin actually working inside of Unreal Engine with all of our stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and log out, close it down because we no longer need, well actually I'm going to, actually no, scrap that, I don't need this up anymore because we can find everything we need on the developer portal. So let's head back to product settings and we want to make sure we retain this information because we're going to have to fill it out in the next video. Now this video is not over just yet. What I want to do is I want to actually bring over the Epic Online Services for EOS into my third person example project right here. So you can by default, if we go to product settings, or sorry, not product settings, plugins, you can search for EOS and you can enable it that way. Uh, that is one way. I personally, just depending on the product that I am, like the product I'm working with, I like to manually make a plugins folder and move it in there, as well as that act allows me to easily see a plugin section here and be able to go through the code of the plugin so for the sake of showing you some things or maybe debugging or maybe just looking through and seeing how something works I like being able to do that directly inside the IDE of the product I'm working or the project I'm working with as well so we're gonna go ahead and do that really quick so if we head over to your project in my case it is uh, EOS YouTube tutorial we need to right click and create a new folder called plugins from here this is where we move that eos plugin into so again this is optional if you don't want to do it then skip this until i come back and we just manually enable the plugins through uh well this window here so again optional so i'm going to go ahead and go to my 4.27 installation folder go to engine plugins find online and here we have online subsystem EOS and that contains everything we need so I'm going to open my plugins folder and copy and paste the online subsystem EOS into it and go ahead and restart my project so I want my stuff to appear here so I want to be able to see the pro the uh, plugins folder in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my project my dot u, uh, u project and generate the visual studio project files once that is done, I'm going to reopen the solution inside of whichever IDE you wish, or in my case, writer in my ID, my, ugh, my IDE. So I'm going to go ahead and let that load up and refresh. Okay, now that it's reloaded everything, as you can see, I have a plugins folder with the Epic Online Services where I can actually see and look through the provided code. So I'm going to go ahead and run my project and make sure that all the corresponding plugins I need are enabled okay, so i'm going to head over to settings plugins and here we have the online platform we can enable eos 
As you can see, it says it's a beta version, blah, blah, blah. Just hit yes, and we're okay. Then I want to click all and search for EOS. So all up here and search for EOS and enable basically everything you see related to EOS. So EOS shared, voice chat, and the online subsystem EOS should already be enabled. Then I want to search for online, make sure the normal online subsystem is enabled. And I believe that is all. Online subsystem null for, actually we don't, I don't think we need that. I think we can test on the same machine with the OS. I'm not hundred percent sure, but we should be good to go there. So we can go ahead and enable all those plugins and restart the editor. Okay, once we're restarted, we can go ahead and fill out all of that information that we have here inside of our project to allow us to easily, well, connect. So we go to settings, project settings, and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom under plugins, you will see online subsystem EOS. Click that, and pretty much we can leave everything here to default. Uh, I want to enable overlay just to test if it's working. Enable social view, and I don't care about this, so you're going to leave that unchecked. So then we want to go ahead and go down to artifacts. So I'll explain what artifacts are here in a second. You can kind of think of these as not necessarily clients, but as your project or product. So I guess you could say like each artifact is kind of a corresponding product. I guess that's one way to put it. Not really sure if that's the best idea, but eh, it is what it is. Anyways, we want to give the artifact a name. So I'm just going to call this one. This can be really anything. So it doesn't even have to actually be your product ID or not your product ID, your product name. I'm just going to give this one the artifact name of uh, YouTube artifact. And then I'm going to copy and put that inside of default artifact name, like so. Then we want to fill out the client ID, secret, product ID, all this stuff that you did before. So starting from product ID, let's grab that, paste it in. Grab the sandbox ID. Paste it in. Grab the deployment ID. Paste it in. And we want the client ID and client secret. And then this, or just the secret. And then for the encryption key, you can leave this one blank. Or if you so wish, fill it out with your example, uh, your encryption key, or in this case, the provided ones. So you can skip this if you wish. We can close this down, file, save, and now we are pretty much good to go. So there's going to be a tiny bit more setup that we have to do, and I'm going to save that for the next video because we're pushing on to about 20 minutes. The only thing that we really have to do before we can actually start working in this is go to our config, default engine. We have to set up some parameters in relation to the online subsystem, tell it which net driver to use, and make sure that we set it to use the EOS subsystem. So I'm going to save that for the next video, and I will see you then. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for, for Patrons, where we make Team Deathmatch and Unreal Engine. As well as you have any questions or anything like that, my Discord is also linked down below. Feel free to join and ask away, so I'll try to help you out. So, wow, I really butchered that outro. Bye!